With Tesla trying to introduce electric vehicles to the world, China seems to be reinventing the wheel of this concept while trying to climb its way to the top and dominate the EV industry. But when it comes to EVs, the most crucial thing is the battery and China seems to take this matter very seriously. And that is what we are going to take a look at in this video. With constant upgrades and implementations, a Chinese manufacturing company BYD sent its Red Tang SUVs to Norway, the country with the fastest adoption of electric vehicles. Their homegrown lithium batteries, which BYD hopes will become a vital platform for the global vehicle industry, give the cars their Chinese name. Per Lian, a salesman for a building ventilation firm, thinks Norwegians would happily buy a Chinese automobile due to their lower cost and decent range. That the Chinese will come and take most of the automobiles in Norway is not a surprise. I like the quality. Most importantly, prices are twice as high if you want a Tesla. BYD, founded in 1995 to create lithium batteries for consumer devices, is now a major producer of batteries for electric vehicles. It has recently built its automobiles that have been successful in China. Boasting the world's second largest electric bus and vehicle production, BYD today ranks fourth in both categories. BYD's success is due to its battery technology, which keeps electric cars cheaper than gas-powered automobiles, hastening a global automotive industry shift. Known as the Blade because of its long, thin shape, BYD's batteries use abundant minerals like lithium and iron while avoiding problematic metals like cobalt and nickel. BYD claims the Blade battery contains 50% more energy than similar battery chemistries in the same space. BYD's foray into foreign markets is an intriguing test of the nascent EV industry's growth, with potential benefits for China. For much of the last century, the major automakers relied on combustion engines. Early engine ideas became Mercedes-Benz and Daimler, while Volkswagen marketed the power of German engineering for years. BYD is one of the most notable Chinese businesses producing electric car batteries. The question is whether they can turn their battery dominance into a considerable worldwide auto market share. Because European and American automakers have a lengthy history in building engines, Chinese manufacturers can't catch up overnight, says Ji Shi of Haitung International Securities in Hong Kong. But EVs are different because they're simpler in form, and Chinese automakers have better battery supply chains. BYD founder Wang Chuanfu and early supporter Warren Buffett have made a fortune thus far. The stock has increased by almost 3,000% since Buffett bought 10% of BYD for $232 million in 2008, making Buffett's holding worth $6.9 billion, US dollars, second only to Apple in terms of returns. Aside from exporting automobiles, BYD has discussed supplying batteries to Tesla. That may make it a lucrative battery provider, further cementing China's grip on the electric car market. China is just starting to export cars, especially electric cars, says Sam Jaffe, managing director of Ken's Energy Research Advisors, and BYD is in great shape. These batteries speed up the development of mass-market EVs. A decade ago, China or BYD's success in batteries and electric cars wasn't certain. The Toyota Prius Hybrid was gaining popularity and Panasonic dominated the global battery market. The hundreds of Chinese battery makers were thought to exclusively produce low-grade batteries for phones and laptops, but Buffett was among the few who saw the company's potential, based on Wang's vision, which Buffett's right-hand man Charlie Munger compared to Thomas Edison and Jack Welch of General Electric. Munger learned about BYG from Li Lu, a Chinese hedge fund manager. After the military crackdown, Li was put on Beijing's most wanted list. He fled to France, then to the US, where he studied at Columbia. Before starting his fund, Li became a passionate value investor after attending class Buffett taught at Columbia. Munger first invested in BYG through Li's fund, which still owns 6% of BYG's Hong Kong listed shares. Outside China, most electric car batteries use cobalt and nickel, raising concerns about a shortage. Nickel is largely mined in Indonesia, where mining destroys biodiverse rainforests and processing mills run on coal. Nickel and cobalt prices have climbed by 25 and 59 percent respectively in the last year, adding to cost pressures on automakers. BYD's batteries solve a sourcing issue that many of its competitors have. That technology was developed by Nobel laureate John Goodenow and Indian-born scientist Arumugam Mathiram at Oxford and Texas universities in the late 1980s. 
Furthermore, these LFB batteries require no nickel or cobalt, as these minerals are abundant in the Earth's crust. Mantheorum claims that the material's low conductivity and limited energy storage capacity hampered its practical applicability when the chemistry was found. Sony introduced the first lithium-ion battery in 1991 for their camcorders. For automobile batteries, nickel was later added to lithium-ion batteries to boost power. But BYD has improved the engineering of the batteries to increase their energy capacity. Unlike most automotive batteries, BYD simple, long thin battery cells are inserted straight into a battery pack, 96 cm long and 9 cm wide. BYD claims it can put 50% more cells into the battery pack than ordinary LFB batteries. As a result, BYD claims that Tang EV in Norway can travel 400 km on a single charge, comparable to a Tesla Model 3. BYD claims the batteries are easily recyclable and can last over a million kilometers. The same stuff. This is a safer material, therefore BYD has optimized it into large cells. Which is good, says Jerry Barker, co-founder and chief scientist at UK battery manufacturer Faridion. With lesser energy density cathode material, you can still make a competitive pack. A larger cell gives you more bang for your buck. It's also safer, which is important for automakers because failures mean costly recalls. General Motors has to recall over 140,000 Chevrolet bolts sold since 2016 due to battery fire danger. It advised owners of unrecalled autos not to park within 50 meters of other cars last month. The blade battery did not generate smoke or flames when a nail was pushed into it, whereas other electric car batteries reached 500 centigrade and burned. The most important feature of an electric car is safety, Wong stated last month. Analysts of Bank of America predict BYG's EV battery revenue to expand by 66% annually between 2020 and 2023. BYG aims to create 100 gigawatt hours of batteries and 1.5 million vehicles by 2025. The Blade battery will be gradually placed on EV vehicles from mainstream brands in and outside of China, BYG said via email. Now practically, every automobile manufacturer is communicating with us about collaborating on Blade battery technology. Mantheorum claims that as global charging infrastructure improves, drivers in India, Europe, and even the US will not need to go as far on a single charge, easing range anxiety. That could help BYD's LFB batteries gain traction. I believe it will be used globally and in America. This saves money and time, Mantheorum says. BYD's rise has contributed to China's battery dominance. CATL, headquartered in Ningde on the Chinese coast, is the world's largest battery maker supplying batteries to Tesla, Daimler, and Volkswagen. It makes LFB batteries. Benchmark Mineral Intelligence predicts that by the end of the year, China will have 77% of worldwide lithium-ion production capacity. It's a result of supporting government policies, huge capital investments, and engineering improvements. Foreign batteries were effectively barred from the Chinese market for a decade, allowing indigenous champions to develop. Having a competitive battery is one thing. Launching a top-selling vehicle is another. For over a decade, Chinese automakers have tried, mainly unsuccessfully, to export these automobiles abroad. In markets that value reliability and customer service and where Chinese brands are unknown, a cheap automobile only takes you so far. They still need to build trust from European and American consumers, says Zhu Lei, CEO of Sino Auto Insights. It will take time because BYD is yet unknown to the average American, European, or British consumer. They must commit time, money, and education to raise awareness and trust. BYD is starting in Norway, where EV sales have surged, accounting for nearly three-quarters of new car sales last year. It competes not only with Tesla and the new models from the legacy car makers, but also with a group of other Chinese firms. Among them is NIO, which began selling electric cars in China last month. Even Chairman Mao's favorite automobile manufacturer, Hongqi or Red Flag, is starting to export electric SUVs to Norway, which SAIC's MG already sells cars there. It plans to install 20 battery switching stations across Norway by the end of the year. Norway has the biggest variety of EV models available, says Christina Bu, Secretary General of the Norwegian EV Association. Traditionally, German brands have been quite popular in Norway, yet it seems that people are more concerned about the car's range. At an electric car symposium last month, Tsinghua University professor Wu Yangming Gao advised caution. BYD's battery technology is also leading globally. 
According to Taylor Ogan, CEO of U.S. hedge fund Snow Bull Capital, BYD could become a major seller of electric cars in China and a major supplier of batteries globally. He claims BYD's battery is by far the cheapest on the market, costing roughly $80 per kilowatt hour at the pack level, compared to $137 per kilowatt hour last year. BYD wouldn't comment on prices. As part of its global expansion strategy, BYD plans to build battery manufacturing in Europe to support European vehicle customers. CATL is also establishing a facility in Germany. BYD is a prototype of where President Xi Jinping wants to lead China, says Michael Dunn, CEO of industry advisory organization Zozo Go. With that said, we have reached the end of today's video. Do let us know what is your opinion on this one. Thank you for watching, everybody, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, please press the bell icon to keep watching our future videos. Take care and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.